and he played his part, for I rearranged the structure of my mind. I was convinced I wanted out, and I didn't ask anyone's permission. Have you ever wondered why one of your friends became wealthy while another became penniless? Can you recall a person who is spoiled and extremely lucky in love while another is struggling to get a text reply back from their specific person? Are you also in such situations? Then worry no more because in today's video, I will be sharing a masterpiece from Neville Goddard that will help you manifest your desires. It is very simple and eye-opening. You will learn about mind conditioning and how you can make it work in your favor. So, stay with me till the end, as I will share some voice clips from Neville Goddard in his own voice in this video. Let me share a story with you, as we tend to remember stories more than statements. When I was growing up, I had this love for cars. When I was going home in my school bus, I and my schoolmates played a game where we pointed out the names of the cars that we witnessed. This was an activity that kept us engaged when we were returning home. I had this desire for cars. One night, I was in my hatchback car with my parents, and for the first time, I saw a Bentley Continental GT. Back then, in my city, it was a rare car. It was a convertible model. It looked so sexy that I was just looking at it with amusement. The driver of the car was a man around 30 years old who was with some women his age. He looked at me, smiled at me, and showed me a thumbs up while pointing at the steering wheel of his car. I returned the gesture with a thumbs up, giving him approval that his car is fantastic. He shook his head as a thank you and then accelerated at very high speed and went his way. Back then, in my country, there were very few households that had internet connections. There were no smartphones in those days. So, I didn't know what the car was called, I only had this logo in my mind. I shared it with my schoolmate, and he also didn't know what it was called. It was like a rare piece that I witnessed. So, one day I went to my cousin's house, who had an internet connection because he was older than me and required it for education. I told him about it, and he searched for me. He said it was a Bentley Continental GT, and he told me its price. Little me was like, oh my god. Such an expensive car, people can buy a decent-sized house in my city for that price. Then this curiosity arose in my mind. Why did that person have such an expensive car while I have this hatchback car? While growing up, I got many answers from society and friends. They told me that they inherited the money from their parents. They are business people. They are in this industry or they are in this profession. These were the answers that you, too, received while growing up. But then, when you get older, you realize that two people in the same business are not earning similar amounts. Some people are making way more money than someone in the same profession. Two sons who inherited their parents' wealth equally after a few years are very different now. One became the richest person in India, while the other's net worth is ten times less than this brother's. Well, today I have the answer for you. You already know it partially, but today you will know it completely in depth. The answer is their arrangement of the mind. The way their mind is programmed. The way their mind is set. In many videos, you will hear that it is about their mindset. You will hear many successful people say that to achieve success, you should have a mindset that is different from what it is now. They never say that your mind has to be different. We all have been given a mind. Your mind is the same as mine, and mine is the same as the person who owns the Bentley. But what makes it different is that their mind is set or programmed. Even Neville advocates this. He explains this beautifully in the next clip. If you took a piece of steel that's magnetized, it does not differ in substance from the demagnetized piece of steel, only in its arrangement of its molecules. The rich man, the poor man, the beggar man, the thief are not different minds, but simply different arrangements of the same mind. There is only God in this world. So when you say, I am, and I say I am, it's the same God, but we have arranged the structure of our mind differently. We have different concepts of self, and that's all. But not one is better because he is richer than the one who is poor. These are only different arrangements of the structure of the mind. Did you listen to what he said? It is all about the arrangement of the mind. In the terms of other manifestation YouTubers, it is called the concept of self. You program your mind by thinking about an idea and replaying it in your mind's eye. By doing so, you are reprogramming your subconscious mind. You are reinventing yourself, your beliefs and assumptions are changing, and your persistent assumptions are becoming facts for you. 
Like Neville said, a thief, a beggar, a poor person, or a rich person are not different minds but are simply different arrangements of the same mind. Someone assumed themselves to be gangsters, and now they are playing that role in society. Someone assumed themselves to be rich businessmen, and now they are playing that role in society. Like this, you two are playing some role in society. You might be an employee, you might be a freelancer, you might be a business owner, you might be a realtor, or you might be an investor. These are the roles that you are playing professionally, and that you chose at some point in time. Apart from them, you are playing many other roles. You can be a great friend, a sportsman, a homemaker, a great chef, a kind person, or a painter. All these are the arrangements of the mind. But the interesting part of this is that you can change them. You can rearrange your mind. You can do it by becoming a doer of what you are about to hear next. Right now, you are the hearer of the law. But when this video ends, you will be presented with the choice of becoming a doer. If you do what is told in the next audio clip, you will transform your world. Neville assures you that you can get what you desire if you follow his advice. It is one of his own success stories when applying the law. If you go to jail, and you say, five to ten years, all right, you know, five years, and maybe you get off in six for good behavior. But when you are drafted into the army, there is no date that you are promised for her to let you out. You are in for the duration. <coughs> well, I was drafted into the army with 17 million dollars. Well, I didn't ask the permission of anyone. I only consult consulted myself. I looked around. I knew what the world knew. It was something that had to be done. But I must be honest with myself. I didn't want any part of it. But no part of it. Others would tell me, is that the act of a coward? I didn't care what they said. Is that being a good citizen? I didn't care what they said. As I just said earlier, what we now know, which is called reason, it's a reasonable thing to do. We're at war. And we're all Americans. And we should go in there because our country has declared war. Go in there and fight. And so reason tells us that should be done. I was drafted. I did not oppose it. They drafted me. Took me down to Camp Hope, Louisiana for my base training. And while I was there, I didn't want any part of it. And I dared to assume that I am out of it. I made my normal natural application, as you have to do in the world of Caesar. Within 24 hours, it came back, and it was simply rejected. It was signed, disapproved, and signed by my colonel, a very nice gentleman. His name was Colonel Theodore Bilbo Jr. His father was Senator of Mississippi. I said nothing. My captain said, for your sake, Goddard, I am very, very sorry. I know exactly how you feel. You want to be with your wife and your little girl. Your son is in Guadalcanal with the Marines. And you are now almost 38. And so, I know, but I would like to go through this war with a man just like you at my side. So I can't say that I am sorry for myself. I'm sorry only for you. I didn't say one word to him, to the colonel. I didn't oppose it. That was the decision of Caesar. Now, I look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and I persevered in that law. And I slept that night as though I slept in my own home in New York City on Washington Square, where I lived on the seventh floor. I lived on that floor, and it was a very large apartment, two bedrooms, a lovely big living room, a dining room, a huge kitchen, and the foyer. And I slept in that place just as though I were there, not in the army. I fell asleep in that state, having done all the normal things that would make me feel this arrangement is perfect. I rearranged the structure of my mind. Instead of seeing 25 men around me sleeping upstairs and knowing that 25 are down below in the next area, I slept in my own bed, with my wife in her bed, and my little girl in her crib in the corner. I felt everything in that place just as though it's taking place. And I rearranged the structure of my mind, and fell soundlessly in that safe. 
at four o'clock in the morning. Here comes a sheet of paper before my eyes and a hand from here down with a pen in its hand and the pen scratched out the word disapprove and it wrote in in a bold script approve and then I heard the word that which I have done I have done do nothing and then I moved it was too early to disturb the 25 other hunters sleeping there but I waited until the very first moment that I could leave that room went down to the latrine and shaved and bathed early and came up filled with the glow that the whole thing was done or oh, I walked in that assumption for the next nine days nine days later the same colonel that disapproved my request called me in he said close the door got it I closed the door he said take a seat and I never asked me to take a seat in his presence before I was a private who always stood in his presence to take a seat and then he gave me all the reasons in the world why I should still be in the army. He said, you still want to get out? I said, yes, sir. Give me another reason. Still want to get out? I said, yes, sir. Another one. When he exhausted all the reasons why I should be in the army, and I'm still saying, yes, sir. He said, all right. Bring me another application. Have your captain sign it. Which I did. That day, I was honorably discharged and out of the army. I didn't run away. I was honorably discharged. If Neville can do it, then you too can. It is simple. All it requires is persistence in the new assumption. Like Neville turned his back on the limitations that he was presented with, you too have to turn your back on your limitations. His application was disapproved due to his old assumptions, but when he changed what was within him, he made himself experience the reality he wanted to experience in the present moment. He didn't convince anyone to give him what he wanted. He just persisted in the feeling. He went to sleep under the assumption of having what he wanted. Now tell me in the comments section what you desire. Is it a job that you want? Just close your eyes and imagine yourself as if you are in the office at your desk, working in that building that you wanted. Imagine getting the salary credited to your bank account and sleeping on that assumption. The world will mold itself to match the assumptions that you make internally. Just do it until you feel satisfied. Night after night, do it until it materializes in your external reality. With this, I hope you learned a very important lesson today. Subscribe to watch more such videos. I will meet you with another golden nugget. Happy manifesting.